What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to build this cool LCD clock with PyQt5 and Python. All right guys, like I said in this video, we're going to build this LCD clock. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships on my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, like I said, in this video, we're gonna build this LCD clock. And there's actually an LCD widget in the PyQt5 designer. That's what we're gonna use. I'm gonna show you how to use that widget, how to do some different things with it, and it should be pretty cool. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and then Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below. There's a link to the PyQt5 playlist with all the other videos in the series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic PyQt5 starter code. I'm calling this lcd.py. Nothing in here now, just what we always have to start out. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm in my C PyQt5 directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on and let's just run the designer. And we just want a main window. So let's go ahead and create that. And if we come down here to the very bottom, we see this LCD number widget. So let's pull this over here. And you can see it's pretty small by default. So we can make this bigger if we want, whatever size we want. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, if we want to change the color of this thing, we can right click here. And an easy way to do that is just to change the style sheet. So we can click on change style sheet. And if we come over here, actually, let's close this and make this a little bigger so we can read this thing. If we click on here, we see this is a Q LCD number widget. So again, click on here, click change style sheet. And here we could just change anything we want in here. So let's go Q LCD number and then squiggly brackets. And this QLCD number is just right up here. You could see the class is QLCD number. So that's what we know what to change. So here we can change the background dash color. And this is just basically CSS stuff here, right? So I want this to be dark green. So I can just type in dark green or you can use your hex color codes, whatever. We can click apply and boom, now it's green. So, okay, that's cool. Now, if we wanna change the app background itself, we could do that, click on the app. Do the same thing, change style sheet. So here we can change the Q widget because you see right here is the name of the class. So let's go Q widget, again, curly brackets. And let's change the background dash color to what, say black, click apply, boom. Now that's black, whatever. Uh, so that should be fine. So let's come up here and save this guy. So let's go file, save as. Actually first, let's just run this, make sure it looks okay. Let's say preview. Eh, this is a little tight. Let's make this like that, something like that. Ah, eh, good enough, whatever. This number is gonna be over here. It'll move because this will expand as we change the time, right? So we don't really care about that. It looks good. So let's go file, save as. And I wanna be in my C PyQt5 directory and let's just call this lcd.ui. And there we go. So let's head back over to our code and let's open that file. So let's go open file. And let's just find lcd.ui. There it is. Now we need to first define our widgets. So if we come through here, we see, let's see, where is it at? QLCD number, this class. We need to import this. Let's come up here and import that guy. And then let's come down here and define our widgets. So we know how to do this. And I'm going to call this self.lcd and set that equal to self.findchild. And then we just paste in that QLCD number and then give it a name. Our name happens to be LCD number. So we can copy that over. There we go. And that's all there is to it. So if we save this and run it, not going to be that interesting, but LCD.py, we see sure enough, here it is. Okay. So now we want to change this to have the current time and we want to create a little timer to update it every second so that it's a, you know, currently updating clock basically. So how do we do that? Well, let's head back over to our code and we need to import a few things. So first we need to import a Q timer that we can then tell, hey, every second update this clock, right? That's just a timer. So we could go from pi qt5 dot qt core. We wanna import Q time and also Q timer. Now we're also gonna need just basic Python date time stuff. So let's just go ahead and import that now. So let's go from date time, we want to import date time. Okay, so that looks good. Now let's come down here and do some timer stuff. So let's create a timer and I'm gonna call this self.timer. And this is gonna be a Q timer, 
right? Now we want to connect this timer to our LCD number thing here, right? So we can go self dot timer dot time out dot connect. And we want to connect it to a function that will take care of all of our time stuff. And we don't have that yet. So let's create it. So self dot, um, I don't know, we can call it clocker or maybe a LCD underscore number, something, I don't know, whatever. So we've got this function, now we need to create it. So let's come down here and quickly define that guy, pass in self, and for now let's pass. Okay, so we also need to tell our timer how often we wanna update it, right? So let's start the timer and update it every second. So to do that, we call self.timer and then dot start, and we pass in the milliseconds that we want it to update. And one second is a thousand milliseconds, so we type in a thousand there. And uh, there we go. So now we need to actually call, call the LCD function, right? So when the program starts, we wanna run this LCD function, right? So let's go self dot LCD underscore number, just like that. And that will call this function. Okay, so looking good. So now what do we wanna do in this function? Well, let's first get the time, right? So I'm gonna create a variable called time, and this is just gonna be date time dot now. And this is just pure Python. This will return a date time thing with all kinds of information in here. We wanna now define exactly what we want from date time, because it's gonna return the year, the date, the month, the time, the seconds, all this stuff, we need to say, hey, actually, what do we want? So let's create another variable. I'm just gonna call it text or formatted underscore time, something like that. And this is gonna be time dot, we're gonna use strf time. And here we can pass in the format that we want, right? So we want hours, so that's percent %h. And if you don't know this formatting, just kind of Google date time Python and you'll see all kinds of formatting tutorials on how to use these different things right here, right? So we also want the minutes, we also want the seconds, and for good measure, if we could put it, you know, AM or PM, we could go like that. Now this H is 24 hours, so at two o'clock in the afternoon, that will be a 14 o'clock. If you want regular time, you can just use I like this, so I'll just go ahead and do that. Okay, so that looks good. So now, let's set this into our LCD little clock thing, right? So we can go self dot LCD dot display and we can pass in whatever we want, in this case, formatted time. Now this isn't actually gonna work because by default, the timer only shows like four digits. In fact, if we save this and run it, we'll see. Let's go ahead and do that. So you can see it's doing seconds in the AM, PM. So one, two, three, four four things, four digits. So that's no good, so we wanna change that. So to do that, let's say set number of LCD digits. And to do that, we just call digit count, and then pass in how many we want. I'm gonna pass in 12, so that's gonna handle all of it. Hours, minutes, seconds, AM, PM, and give us a little bit of space too, just for fun. So let's go ahead and save this and run it, see if that worked. Boom, sure enough. 8.35 a.m. and 47 seconds. If we wait 10 seconds, we can see it change from 35 to 36. It's very exciting, right? I don't know. I can see also, well, here we go. The change, boom, 36, whatever. And you'll notice these all have like white outlines. It's sort of a raised text. And maybe you like that, maybe you don't. We can get rid of it if we want. We could say, hey, make this flat text instead of raised text. So let's just go ahead and do that just to show you how to do it. And let's say make text flat, no white outline, right? So to do that, pretty simple, we just call self.lcd. And now we can set the segment style, right? I spell it right, set, no I did not. Set segment, segment, there we go. Set segment style. Now inside of here, we wanna tell it, hey, use flat style. And that's just gonna be QLCD number dot flat. So if we save this and run it, actually let's make a little comment here. Display the time, right? So let's save this, run it. 
see if that looks a little better maybe. Okay, now it's just black. It doesn't have that white outline. I kind of like that better, whatever. Uh, you can get rid of this AM PM thing if you want, just by taking off this P. And then we might change this back down to 10 or so, something like that. We can save that and run it. Now it's just 837.36, eh, whatever you want. And you can play around with this if we left it at 12. You know, it stretches further. We could, what, move it to eight or something. Save that. Run it. Now it's sort of bigger, takes up the whole space. Whatever you like, whatever you prefer, you can do. And just that easy. I'm going to go ahead and put back 12 and this P just so it's in there. You can take it off if you want, but we'll leave it in there for the code notes so that people can see it if they want. And that's really kind of all there is to it. So just a fun little video. You could do this with time. You could do it with any sort of number, right? You could just have a countdown or something. You could do random number generator with the LCD, whatever you want. It's just kind of a fun little widget. You can make it big like we did. You can make it really small, stick it down in the corner of your app. If you want a timer running for some reason, anything you want. I mean, you don't have to use this LCD number in order to do this timer stuff. You could do that with any label that has text in it with numbers. You could have it update. But with the LCD number thing, it's just a little bit more fun and it's just something to play around with. And that's always fun. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Alder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.